to me. Well, I talk about three students that passed algebra with flying success. You know, just for fun, hold up your hand if you enjoyed taking algebra. Hands up if you've taken algebra and you enjoyed it. Okay, hold that thought because I'm going to need you in three and a half minutes. <laughs> the first student has a pillow to take power naps during the day. I need this pillow because it seems like I'm always tired. I get up early, I work hard at school. At 3.30, mom takes me to enrichment class. I eat a quick dinner, and then I'm off with a tutor until 11 o'clock at night, six days a week. The teacher in this classroom has a degree in mathematics, and she plans every minute of every day to provide the right amount of feedback and take advantage of those teachable moments in mathematics. The textbook in this classroom, 40 pages long for the entire year. The parents put quite a bit of pressure on the kids. In fact, when they're young, they are told that the only way to succeed in life is to excel in school. I'm talking about U Jin, a foreign exchange student that lived in our house. He took algebra in South Korea before he came to the United States. You know, some kids bring home puppies. Well, our son Kent brought home a foreign exchange student. <laughs> the second student doesn't have a pillow. I've got this apple because my math teacher is really cool. She knows how to explain things in a way that makes sense to me. In fact, my friends and I don't think math is hard. We think it's fun. The teacher in this classroom studied mathematics in college for five years before she got her license to teach. Her day consists of working with kids, of course, but a considerable amount of time working with her fellow teachers to analyze student work and develop strategies that will provide an opportunity to meet those teachable moments. This classroom is designed in a way that every kid can succeed. The furniture, the parents, they set their kids up in a way that when they hit that classroom door, they'll succeed. They make sure they have warm, comfortable clothes, good meals, plenty of sleep, and even a quiet place to study. I'm talking about Arietta, another foreign exchange student that lived in our home. She's from Kiel, Germany. And I can still remember the first hour that Arietta spent in the United States. I picked her up at the airport. And on the way home, stopped to get some money at the ATM, and I noticed her kind of looking at me. And then she blurted out in flabbergasted voice, you Americans don't even get out of your car to get money? <laughs> and I knew that was a teachable moment for me. If my wife and I could understand what assumptions she brought with her to the United States, we could be better host parents. Third student from a very early age, lots of encouragement. The words, way to go, good job, have been heard hundreds of times in school and sporting events. In fact, her entire class got a trophy just for participating in a music activity. The teacher in this classroom has a master's degree in education, not in mathematics. And teachable moments here go way beyond mathematics. If the kids walk into the classroom and say there's a big snowstorm or we're in the middle of the Olympics and they want to talk about that, the teacher will take time to explore beyond mathematics. The textbook in this classroom for algebra is 400 a year. And the parents here are very supportive, provide transportation, money for after school activities like sports or even to learn a second language and to pay for summer camps. This time, I'm talking about our daughter, Valerie. She graduated from Santa Fe High School and the University of New Mexico, and she's well on her way to a successful career. In, in fact, she was just recognized by her boss for how quickly she was able to design, develop, and implement a brand new smartphone app in less than a month. Okay, so let's compare these three classrooms using PISA, the Program for International Student Achievement. PISA measures math knowledge, but it also, even more importantly, measures how kids apply that knowledge in real-world situations. So let's go to the first classroom, more like South Korea, China, or even Singapore. 
And I can still remember in 1994 hearing a delegation from Singapore and, can, and, and China say, this is our 20-year plan for education. And boy, has that implementation gone well. Because on PISA, they've gone from near the bottom to very close to the top in math achievement. Second classroom, it's more like Germany, Finland, or even Canada. And after some major school reforms, Canada and Finland have gone from the middle of the scores to the very top in mathematics, PISA. Third classroom, you might have guessed, even though there are lots of exceptions, you might find it in the United States. And since PISA began in 2000, the United States has been stuck at below average, not getting better or not getting worse. In fact, right now, we're 26 out of 34 countries. And I ask you, is 26 out of 34 good enough? Well, at Los Alamos National Laboratory, we said no way. So we designed the Math and Science Academy for teachers in northern New Mexico. And we studied what was working in other places. And the results of that are incredible. Student achievement's gone up. The teachers are renewed. So we learned a lot with our Math and Science Academy. And you take all that knowledge, and you take what I've learned as a teacher, as a parent, as a college professor, as a state policymaker, and add all that up. And if we're going to turn things around, it looks like it's going to be pretty complicated and could be very expensive. But there's something we can do right here, right now, that won't cost any money. And that involves the definition of the word teacher. So right here, when I say teacher, I'm talking about anybody that interacts with a learner, age zero all the way up to a senior citizen. So look around this auditorium. We're all teachers. What does a teacher do? They look for those teachable moments. And what do I mean by a teachable moment? Well, here's an example. You're in the kitchen with a seven-year-old and the floor has tiles on it. Get down on that floor and draw your hands around four of the tiles and make a square. And talk about that as one number. And then use the language of fractions. What if I take one tile away? What do I have left? Well, three quarters. And if that child gets to sixth grade and they hear that teacher say three quarters and they see a three slash four in their math book and they can think back to that kitchen, you've succeeded. So let's do a little bit of mathematics. We've got about 325 people in the auditorium right now. Let's say each one of us took advantage of three teachable moments a week. That's all, just three in a week. That's about 1,000 in a week. And in a year, we could accomplish 52,000 teachable moments. That's enough to impact every single child in New Mexico. Just this room, we could impact every single child in New Mexico. So the potential is huge. And if you will come with me and help others think of themselves as teachers, we can have a huge impact. Let's go out there and seize those teachable moments.